Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me today. And thank you for joining me for my last video where I talked about connection and friendships and how they shift and change as we get older and our priorities change and we have fuller richer lives and lots of things going on that we're juggling. I thought we would curl hair today together and talk about some holiday traditions. I've already uh, done my makeup and wanted to share what I have on the face here. So I'm doing like a whole, you know, shop my existing stash of makeup and buying less makeup except for that Danessa Myricks blurring balm. I think that's the only thing makeup wise and mascara that I got in the Sephora sale. Everything else was skincare and fragrance and, and other things. And so today's eyeshadow is courtesy of the good old star palette from Natasha Denona, one of her very early palette releases. Why does it look like, oh, it's the straw. <laughs> Oh my God. I was like, what is up and down on my chest here? It's the lipstick is on my straw here. How gross. Let me get that out from the scene. It's in my little faux Stanley cup. Have I told you all about this? I will link this below. It's from Etsy, not an affiliate link or anything like that. 40 ounces in this sucker. Sorry. Had y'all looking at my gross lipstick straw there. Ew. Back to this. And I wanted... It looks so much more powerful in person, like stronger and more intense. I'm looking at the desktop mirror here. It has like a cool side and a more neutral, warmer side. I used mostly this through the crease, that to deepen up, that on the outside part of the lid and this on the inside part of the lid. I didn't do fake lashes today. My mascara is the good old Essence Lash Princess which I'm enjoying. I mentioned in the last video that this is one that I was a little disappointed by a number of years ago when I first tried it, but I'm really enjoying it this time around. I think it's, it's giving me nice volume. I do need to be better about doing the lash serum in the evenings. I've been forgetting probably for six to eight months now to do the lash serum up here. And so my eyelashes are starting to look more sparse and that bugs me. <laughs> I really like nice full lashes. I used good old e.l.f. Jelly Pop Primer. For concealer, it was the Luminous Silk Concealer in the color 4.5 from Armani. This one, I would say, is a little thicker than the Power Fabric one that Armani is famous for, if you will. Uh, a little thicker, a little less like wet of a formula than that other one. I pulled out the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. Remember, this was like all the rage, what, six months ago or so, in the color 2N26, 2 Neutral 26. And I like the way that this looks on my skin. It still looks, I think, pretty natural. You can still see a lot of skin texture and all of that, but it helps to even out the tone. I'm noticing huh, if I don't wear foundation during the day for work, when I show up on Zoom, my face looks really almost splotchy with the way that the light from the computer is hitting my face. And I do have like a little desk light. I just don't like it. So I look a lot more even if I put some foundation on. So there's that. And then a little powder from the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfected, Perfection Blurring. This is an under eye powder, but I use it all over my face. And you can see that it is well loved. Wait till you see the inside of this. Ew, this is in the color light. I think probably in the very next Sephora sale, I will re-up on this because it's it's seen its day. <laughs> You're starting to see the, found, the I was going to call it the foundation, but I guess the platform that the powder is sitting on. So I'm going through that. On my cheeks, I have this little Rare Beauty liquid blush. I have this in three colors. This is the more peachy of them. Let me show you how this works because I could use a little bit more blush, right? Because we're on camera, so we're allowed to be a little bit more garish with our makeup. But I only do a few dots in person. If you're not on camera, I would say three little dots like this will do ya. And I try to use the side of the sponge isn't that pretty? It's luminous. It's kind of natural looking. It looks a little clownish here in person because I'm putting a lot more for the camera's sake, but it is very, very nice in person if you use very little of it there. Now you can actually see the colors showing up in person. It looks like somebody punched me in the cheeks. <laughs> hey, but anyway, these are really nice and you can get the little trio. You don't have to get the full size of the blush. This is plenty. I've had this for months, you know, and if you have a lot of blushes, you know, it takes you a while to go through them. There's no need to get like the big, the big one, unless it's the only one you have. That's another conversation. 
for like a bronzer contour Con bronzer 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 and contour all at once because i'm a little too lazy to do them separately i used the patrick ta and this one is called she sculpted it's not the shade that i really love it's a little bit on the a little ashy looking for me but it does give me a, a slight bit of shade around the perimeter and I did a little bit of extra in here. Again, it looks pretty washed out on the camera, but that's okay. This one comes with powder and it comes with a cream. And for some reason with Patrick Ta, you can put the powder down first and the cream over that. Usually it's the other way around. You wanna put the cream down first and then the powder over that. So I used a lot of the cream in the, the hollow here. I guess you can see that a little tiny bit. <laughs> and then <laughs> this more in the upper cheek area, kind of like, so I use this to contour and this to bronze if you want to think about it that the way. The good old precisely my brow for these crazy eyebrows that I never get right up in here. Y'all, it'll probably be another five years on my channel before I figure out what to do with the middle here. If there are any makeup artists out there that would like to come help me in person, come on down. <laughs> Lipstick is probably a bad combination here of a Sephora lip liner that is too light. Oh, oh I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't realize. We have, is that a sharpener? Shut up. I don't know what that is. Is that a sharpener? Yes, it looks like a sharpener. Shut the front door, built in. But that's the color there. The color's called Nothing But Nude, and it is way, way too light for this lipstick. But look at that. That does not go together. <laughs> I was too lazy to redo my lip liner. So that's what we're going with. And I actually... Little trick, trick of the trade, although I didn't do it well today. I actually use some of the bronzer as lip liner with a little tiny brush, like something like, like that, you know, a little tiny thin brush. Can you hear my husband turning? He's making a huge bowl for my mom who's coming for Thanksgiving. That's the topic of the video is our holiday traditions. Uh, so hopefully that's not too distracting. And then my lipstick is called Janet Rust, which I love these gucci lipsticks i love the component like it's like a uh i always want to call it corrugated because i think a corrugated cardboard but there's another word for this if you know let me know because of course it's gonna it's gonna be like 3 a.m before i figure it out and i'm gonna wake up in bed it's a, a bit of a matte color and it's just like orangey fiery red that i think is amazing it's matte but it has like a little tiny bit of sheen these are some of my favorite lipsticks and like if you want a splurge lipstick this is a good one and I think that's it for makeup. Did I forget anything important? I think that's all. So let's get to curling hair and talking about holidays, shall we? I got my Hot Tools Big Barrel. This is, I think, like an inch and a half. or It can't be two inches. I think the two inches are bigger. Does it tell me on here? It doesn't say, but let's just assume it is a, a big barrel. If you want like bigger, wavier curls in your hair, it's a nice, a nice one. I like that it gets hot. If you want to, you can control the temperature on it. This is up to 430 degrees, which is insane. And probably why the ends of my hair look fried, but that's how I do y'all. So let's talk about holiday traditions. I'm curious to know what you're planning. So as I'm filming this, it is November 11th, Saturday. First of all, can I take a little detour in the conversation to just say some touching moments that <laughs> I had yesterday and today with our younger kids? I mentioned that our daughter is in a play upcoming and she's the lead actress. So she's been practicing her lines around the house and it's really cool to see her perfect her craft. She's also a creative writer, which is really neat to see the story she comes up with. So last night she brought a story to the table that she has on her computer. This was after dinner. We made homemade pizza last night. So good, so bad for me. I should not be eating all that bread, but oh my God, so delicious. I don't even know what her story was about because I was so amused with my husband trying to read her story out loud because she was too shy to read it to us. And so she was, <laughs> we were sitting at the table while he's reading it and she was standing in like this doorway to the kitchen between the foyer and the kitchen listening. And I didn't realize she was there. And so like my husband would pronounce something in the story incorrectly and she would jump out from the shadows and go, oh, it's this, which was cracking me up. So for example, she has a character in the story named Soleil, like sun, soleil in French, or sunlight. I don't know what soleil actually stands for or means. And so my husband pronounced it soleil. And she jumped out from the shadows and was like, it's, it's soleil. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is the cuteness of these kids coming into their own, figuring out what they like, figuring out what their talents are, their hobbies, and pursuing those. I really get such a kick out of watching that part of their lives 
I miss the youngness. I miss the cute days. I miss the, the, the sweet like hugs and kisses that toddlers give you and all the fun questions that they ask. I mean, that stuff kind of drives you crazy at sometimes too, but there's like a beauty in that, a simple, lovely, innocent beauty that I miss from that time period. But, you know, in exchange, like each period of their lives brings a new kind of pleasure and joy. And so now that the two younger ones anyway are teenagers, it's really about like watching them come of age and become who they are. There's this proverb, I believe it's a Kenyan proverb, if I understand correctly, and legend has it that it's whispered in the ears of babies. And the, the proverb is, become who you are, meaning you're born with talent or you have innate inherent talents or ways that you are and that make you different. This is my interpretation. That make you different from other humans, you know, that make you a unique person. And it's really neat to see them. Look, I'm creating these lines. I know there are ways to avoid that, but I'm not doing it well here. So sorry. You're going to see the little lines in my hair. Anyway, become who you are. The ways that they are coming into their own are really fun to watch, especially because they're, they're staying out of trouble, which is, of course, like a big deal to us as parents. First and foremost, we want them to be safe and be making good decisions. And so you guys, I have a candle lit. Y'all light a candle at your house <laughs> that all of these kids are making good decisions and staying out of trouble that they can't reverse, if you know what I mean, or that's going to have long-term damage or consequences. And so, you know, watching her become a young, confident actress, because she does have like insecurity about being on stage, but she's so good. She doesn't need to be insecure. There's no reason. And watching her enjoy and develop her writing style is such a privilege. Really neat and like really heartwarming. And then today, my son had a speech invitational, it's called. He's at a speech club. And it literally is like orating competition. So they'll give you a topic like the situation in the Middle East and have kids like expound on that on the spot and they're uh, judged. They're judges that score them and you know there's awards and all of that. It can be frivolous stuff like homemade pizza could be a topic <laughs> or it could be something really serious like politics or whatever. Anyway, watching him, <gasps> I took him this morning. The school where the competition is is about 20 minutes away. So I took him to Starbucks and he usually gobbles down. If I get him like a drink, he gets like that mango fruit dragon drink. I haven't tried it. Have you? And he gets coconut milk. He loves it. And then a little sandwich, like a breakfast sandwich. He usually just gobbles it down. And today he really had trouble eating. And I was like, are you okay? Are you getting car sick? And, you know, he's sitting over there in his little suit. I'll put in a picture here somewhere of my little pumpkin pie in his little suit. So cute. You know, these boys these days, they like to wear a lot of hair. So I'm used to it at this moment. I'm looking over and seeing him in his little curly hair and his, his blazer. And he's sitting there just like terrified. Like he's literally shaking. He's like, mom, I'm so nervous. And I was like, oh, my heart melted thinking, how cute is it to be like in that stage of life or things like that? That's your biggest worry, you know, a speech invitational and how you're going to perform in front of your peers, what you're going to sound like, how the judges are going to score you. Super duper stinking cute. Like, you know, once again, my heart just melted thinking, isn't this precious? Isn't this precious? So he's there now and <laughs> I had the chance to run home because he's there all day, like all day through dinner time. I get to, parents aren't allowed to watch and I understand why we would make them nervous. So we're only allowed to come in at the end for like the awards portion of it. So I was able to come home, slap some makeup on. Here I am curling my hair, talking to y'all. And then I'm going to film one of the fragrance videos and that's going to be it for today. So the other thing that we're doing, and this is the topic of today's video with you all, gosh, many, many minutes in. Sorry, I do that a lot, don't I? Friends, you are always welcome to skip ahead to the portions that you're interested in if the, you know, general banter isn't something that you're, you're interested in. I understand. Sometimes I will hop into someone's video and be really annoyed because they take 10 minutes to get into the topic. I get it. And now I'm a person that takes 10 minutes or more to get into the topic. <laughs> We are starting to decorate this weekend for the holidays. So I have mentioned before in other videos that I used to be a huge, huge decorator for the holidays. We used to have, once upon a time, 
a tree, like a Christmas tree in every house. I do have some fall decorations up, like you see little pumpkins and things like that around the house here and there and everywhere. We got pumpkins on the porch. We have our fall wreaths out and all of that on the front door. But for the Christmas holidays and into New Year's, we used to have a big tree or a substantial tree, like three to five feet, something that you could see when you walk right into the room. In every room, we would hang stockings. We had lights everywhere. We had lights on the porch, uh, in the foyer, up and down the staircase, all of that. Lots of Santa Clauses all around the house, lots of snowmen. And it's a really exhausting process. You know, we got smart in terms of like where we store things so that those objects are now in the rooms where they will be put out. Oh, I see a little chipmunk outside. What's going on, Alvin? Where are your friends? It's a beautiful day out. Beautiful day out. So we got into the habit of putting things in the room where they would be put out at. Instead of like in the attic, we cleared out other junk in like bookcases and console tables and things like that, and then used the drawers and whatever to store the items. But we also greatly reduced, if you can believe it, the items, even though there's still a lot. So I mentioned that my mom and sisters are coming for Thanksgiving. My dad's going to stay home. He's not into flying very much these days. And so he prefers to stay behind. So we will Skype him in or whatever. Now, mom and sisters are coming. They are not big decorators. They don't do big decorations in their places. And so for me, it makes it even more special for them to come and enjoy them at our house. And because they're coming for Thanksgiving, which is in a couple of weeks, we want to make sure that we have everything out. <laughs> oh my God, what are we doing? And ready for them to enjoy as they come into the house. And I'm talking about everything like Christmas candles lit with Christmas smells and everything from like lighting to we want the little, my husband has this whole village, Christmas village, um, like the houses that light up. He loves that stuff in the family room put up the stockings, put up everything, the whole thing. We have a big tree in the family room that's probably, I think it's nine to 12 feet. I don't remember you guys. I feel like 12 feet seems too tall, but those ceilings in there are really tall. So, and the, the thing goes up pretty high, so I don't know. And then we have another six foot tree that we have in like what we call the piano room where the piano is. And those are the two big trees. So we're gonna start that tomorrow. And the way that we're gonna do it is I'm like, how do we wanna tackle this? Because we don't look forward to it. <laughs> We look forward to it being up and then we look forward to it being taken down. Like, but we don't like the in-between parts to get there. And so we decided this year we're going to tackle the big things first. So the big things are the trees. They are like the biggest pain to pull down, um, put up and decorate with all of the ornaments and all that. So we're going to do that first. And then, then I can come back like in every day, do something a little bit different in each room, right? Like put up the Santas over here, stockings or, over there, or put out some candles or some whatever, whatever the things are, all of the things everywhere. Oh! And then I'll let my husband do the lights on the porch or whatever, however he feels like doing it. Ooh, that's loud. He's making a really huge, beautiful wooden bowl. He's turning it in his wood studio right now for my mom. So she'll love that. So let's talk about food. That's what I wanted to ask. Like, what do y'all cook for Thanksgiving and for Christmas? So let's just talk about Thanksgiving for now. So I love the idea of having a big turkey, but no one here really likes turkey. I've done fried turkey before and that's really awesome, but I don't have the fried turkey contraption. By the way, I'm letting my hair cool and set in the curls and then I'll just rake my fingers through it to kind of let it out. You know, I, I am Puerto Rican and so there are Puerto Rican Christmas dishes that are traditional for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. So I think we'll lean more in that direction for this Thanksgiving. So instead of doing like a big turkey, like a big American style traditional turkey with the mashed potatoes and all that, I have to make uh, what's called a, a pernil, which is a big pork roast. It's a pork shoulder or pork butt that has the bone in it that you roast. Oh my God, y'all. You make it the night before by putting slits all over it. If I find a good recipe, I'll link it in the description box for you. If you, you have to, of course, be a pork lover and you have to like the idea of the crispy part of pork skin, you know, the fatty part, it's the part that pork skins would be made out of if you buy those, except it's not dried out like that, right? When you cook it on the actual pork itself, 
but you make slits in the entire pork roast and then you pour into those slits a combination of olive oil and spices and garlic that is just freaking divine. I always put a lot of sazon, S-A-Z-O-N, which is a traditional, you know, Puerto Rican, actually just Caribbean, like all of Latin America in general, and especially uh, the Latin American Caribbean parts, meaning folks that speak, you know, from Spanish speaking countries like the Dominican Republic, Cuba, um, I don't know if if Cubans use this. I don't know. I've been to Cuba, but I don't remember seeing it anywhere. Puerto Ricans and Dominicans, for sure, use a lot of sazon. So the pork roast, I'm going to do uh, sweet potatoes. And the key there is to overbake them so that they're ooey and gooey, where the sugars inside of the potatoes like caramelize. Oh my gosh, put a lot of butter, a lot of cinnamon and sugar, brown sugar especially plantains, sweet plantains in particular, and they're fried. They're very sweet. They're very mushy. They're very delicious. They're very sweet. Ooh, somebody's having trouble with his bowl. So something done happen over in there. And I'll probably do some like a big salad with tomatoes and carrots and cucumbers and also avocado. I think then we're also going to make a big apple pie from scratch. My husband and the kids love apple pie. I'm okay with it. Actually, it'd probably be more like an apple crumble, like like not a traditional pie where you do the lattice on top, but it's more like apple crumble where the doughy things are underneath. I'll do a picture of it at some point. That and then like a pecan pie. You say pecan or pecan. I actually say pecan, so I don't know why I just said pecan pie. A pecan pie. <laughs> I make that. It's a bourbon pecan pie that my husband loves. So then on Friday, because we're doing two Thanksgivings, I know that's crazy. It's just crazy. It has to do with the fact that we're a blended family and the kids are having dinner in different places and we want them to enjoy it all. So on Friday, it's going to be a Italian like feast and I am going to make a big lasagna. I make the most amazing, if I do say so myself, lasagna that is very meat heavy. You ever get lasagna at restaurants and it's like just thin pasta and sauce and you're like, where's the beef? Where's the beef? I put a lot of crumbled beef in mine and it is like the heartiest dish. And I do probably twice the cheese that the recipe calls for. I mean, delicious. My husband will make his focaccia, which he has perfected and he loves to make. He's got <laughs> a perfected recipe that took him like 20 tries to get to. And then I think we'll do tiramisu that night. So it's going to be a very fattening couple days here for Thanksgiving. And then I'll probably repeat that for Christmas and also then have eggnog, which we'll talk about then. This Puerto Rican eggnog called coquito, where you make it, it's a little spiced with rum and all of that. And I'll share the recipe with you in a really funny video about how to make it. So just wanted to ask you what you are cooking for the holidays. I also wanted to ask how you're starting to think about shopping for Christmas. Are you thinking about that? Do you shop for Christmas or another holiday? Do you celebrate Hanukkah? Do you celebrate Kwanzaa? Do you celebrate another end of year celebration? Isn't Diwali coming up or has it passed already? That one I'm not as familiar with. Uh, and do you do gifts? If so, what are you starting to think about? My husband and I usually exchange gifts every year. This year we're like, do we really want to? Because we buy like ourselves everything that we want during the year. So it's like... It feels so silly to exchange lists because it's like, we can just go get this stuff ourselves at this point. Why don't we focus on the kids? And even the kids are really not into like things the way they have been in the past. Like one of our kids has asked for a guitar. Okay, we might get the guitar. And maybe another one will ask for like song books or something. We can get them little things, but they probably are going to enjoy more than anything money. <laughs> just being handed money so that they can have in their little accounts and be able to use as they wish. And then my husband and I are like, well, what do we want to give for each other? Is it silly to try to exchange gifts? So we'll probably do something. So there's like a thing to open on thanks on Christmas morning. But I think we want to do other joint things that we want and need. For example, in our bedroom, we want to get new logs for our fireplace. The logs that are there have been there for a long time. They're tiny. We want to get bigger, robust gas logs. So that's a joint thing that we would both enjoy. I think we also want to get a new smoker for our deck. We like to do smoked meat and also get a nice grill. The grill that we have, we grill a lot in this house. We grill everything. <laughs> you know, we grill chicken, we grill steaks, we grill hot dogs, we grill hamburgers, the whole thing. We need to get a new grill. We have done our grill in. It wasn't the most expensive to begin with. We 
bought a bargain grill and the bottom of it has fallen out. So we might get like a new high end grill. What about you? Like what's on your Christmas wish list this year and what are you cooking? And I think that's it. I wanted to just hop on and have that quick little conversation. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for joining me today.